to do a little bit of diving into politics. That's it's just that time of season, and we are um, we are conservatives, so it's going to start to pile up on us. But we've always me. I'm talking about me. I've always tried to find a way to express my views on being a black conservative and my views on how I see the political landscape in a way that people that I love and friends of mine that would understand me and want to listen to me would accept it. And it's a hard thing to do. I mean, in most cases, you just got to be straightforward and let the chips fall where they may. Maybe you lose some family members. Maybe you lose some friends. It is what it is. You can't do nothing about it. It is what it is. Whatever. Whatever. But we have found a young lady that has stepped into the political arena um, at this recent uh, Trump, uh, Trump uh, campaign stop in Georgia, Michaela Montgomery. And... Honestly, this young lady is pretty much stating, saying what how I feel. And she's saying it in a way that I love to hear. Because deep down inside, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just a black guy from Indiana. Grew up a certain way. Loved a certain way. But there's only so so many ways to put how you feel about politics that doesn't hurt the democratic black agenda so we found this young lady we want y'all to check her out she she did an awesome job yesterday speaking and we want y'all to hear and just tell us what y'all think I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So, <laughs> my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. <laughs> Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit, down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County Coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network, so put some respect on my name. Now, why don't we jump right into it? This is exactly what we need, my friends. I mean, she has all of the characteristics that are going to speak to a crowd of people that rarely do not listen to this kind of rhetoric or rarely do not listen to this kind of talk and that's what it's going to need i mean if we're really going to get some change in this world and really going to live in a world that's going to help us all then we're going to need people like this young lady to help us spread the word to those people who just don't you know that, that don't talk or listen in a proper way let's go see as a young single mother I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high I, too damn high. I can tell you that as a young black voter groceries are too damn high I'm gonna tell this quick story okay so I am, I'm, I'm a single guy myself, you know, and I don't e eat during the week. But on my weekends, I particularly cook breakfast myself. Saturday and Sunday, I cook myself breakfast. And so, you know, bacon and eggs on Saturday, biscuits and gravy on Sunday. Unless I'm busy, that's not every weekend. I spend a lot of time traveling and stuff like that. But when I have time, this is what I do for myself. So that means that. Pretty much as a routine, on Saturday mornings, I hit the stove to get my bacon, right? And I'm talking specifically about my bacon. I've seen over the course of over the course of the last year, I've seen that the same bacon that I purchased pretty much every Saturday has gone from a price of two dollars and thirty-two cents. So when I purchased it, 
yesterday, five dollars and fourteen cents. That's that's well over a sixty percent increase in my pay. Gain. And my whole thing is that I've been doing this pretty much a good percentage of, of the last couple of years of my life. And I, you know, back when Trump was in the office, did anybody remember price the interest, the price changes on our groceries? Did anybody notice how interest rates have skyrocketed so much? That is why the main reason, one of the main reasons that I am adamant of that I will refuse to vote for Kamala Harris and I am more leaning towards the Trump side is because when Trump was in office, I didn't feel this way. I didn't feel like gas was too expensive. Even during COVID, COVID was a horrible, horrible time in my life. I lost several businesses. I lost lots of money. Hor COVID was a horrible time in my life, but it was not a horrible time when it came to my finances. It, didn't, it was not a horrible time where I saw interest rates on things that I had to purchase skyrocket. All the problems that I had, the financial problems, were lightened because of the situation that the world was in at the time. But I digress. Let's keep going. Seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we kept the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy, so I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. And this is a type of you know, attitude, fervent, and, and people that we need to get people out there to vote. Um, and, you know, if you're going to vote for Kamala Harris, that's fine and dandy. You know, I, I mean, you know, I always think that, you know, you you get the presidents that you're going to get and you deal with them after the fact. It's just how it is in the, in the world we live in. But if you are adamant on change and you're all adamant that you, you, are paying attention to what needs to be done and just not the rhetoric that's the whole thing there's so much rhetoric going on i mean all i i, I have group chats with high school and college friends and all of these things and a majority of them are still going to vote for kamala harris but they don't never say the positive things that kamala harris did they talk about the negatives that they say about donald trump uh they grab the coochie the the you know the the lies the the felonies you know all of these things that have nothing to do with politics nothing to do with our own lives and what's going on let's keep going they love me they love me they really love me the left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said but i want you guys to pay attention to what has been done they don't want to talk policy they just want to use propaganda to steal your vote the left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? I'm not gonna get into the whole Willie Brown thing. It, it's uh, it's. I mean, I hope you guys understand. It's just Willie Brown, this guy that was a politician who said that he was um, having relations with Kamala Harris when she was a young go getter, and I think he helped her along the way to get to where she was. And you know it's hearsay, so I, I think he he might even mention it as well. But he's like ninety some years old, so we're not gonna hold that.
to any standard right now. But what we are going to talk about is the fact that she has been destroying black families for quite some time. I mean, the the crime bills that she helped put in, the criminal, the black men that she's thrown under the jail for marijuana, the 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 criminals that she has held back information on to get them in trouble. She has a horrible, horrible record as a prosecutor. And in and more and more to the point, she has a horrible, horrible record of prosecuting people of color. And now, now that she's running for president, now we just have to look past all that, all this polit political stuff, not personal stuff, not not felonies, uh, questionable felonies about business dealings. No, not uh, questionable relationships with, with, with strippers. No, what we're talking about is her political aspirations, what she did when she was in a office position to Americans, people of color. And now we're going to have to come to the realization or we have to accept that if she becomes vice president, she's not going to have those same. I, she's not going to have those same ideas and thoughts that she had when she was bringing the back black people down. This has got to be a vote for a president that is based on policy and ideas for the future of the world. It cannot be a vote based on what we feel personally about a person because I don't feel personally anything about Kamala Harris I, what I feel about her what, what I think about her is what she what I know she has done and what I hope it would, she wouldn't do anymore but I know that she's done it before and I know about the situations where you, she's trying to use she's the whole idea that she's black is killing. I mean, I've seen her state and make statements that she was not black. Back when I was looking at her when they was talking about she was talking about becoming a president and she did that little debate and that white lady told her up told her up. And I looked it up a little bit back then and how she, you know, was withholding evidence. She withheld evidence in one case that the guy was going to death row. It was it was just so negative and the idea that now she's just this black person that's been behind black people, uh, let's keep going. I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, wow. which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. Those are all true things. Those are all true things that Trump did when he was in office. Do we have any comparable things like that, even under Biden, let alone that Harris is backing? Anything? Have we seen? Remember when Ice Cube came up with with his plan? What I think was like platinum plan. When Ice Cube Ice Cube came up with his plan, Biden and Harris didn't even want to meet with him. They didn't even meet with him. We didn't. And we didn't listen then. We have to understand that we cannot vote with our hearts. We have to vote with our minds. 
We not vote with our eyes. We have to vote with our minds. You can't vote with our cause she a, 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 a black sorrow. I can't vote for her because she's a black sorrow. I can't vote for her because she know the dances. She can say ski wee. I can't do it. I need more. I need more. I need something that's going to help everybody. Because everybody's hurting right now. Let's get back to it. And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. See, and this is the, the, the rhetoric that I hate too. You know, it's, it, well, I mean, it's gonna be back and forth. Trump's gonna do it to her. She's gonna do it to Trump. And it, it's just gonna be one of those things. But I did wanna say that, and I think I was probably the only black dude out there thinking this, but back when Trump was in office, I was like, why are we not trying to put up these walls? I mean, if we had really dug into that and did the whole wall thing, would we have the, the, you know, the, the, the problems that we're having now with the, the, the migrants, the problems that we're having in all these countries with these floods of migrants and the problems that they're causing, all this money that these, these states are spending on these migrants. I, somebody was telling me the other day that migrants in some places are about to start getting $20,000 a month to live. And I'm like, are they giving that to the homeless? What's, what are we doing about... I cannot understand how so much money has been used and allocated to the migrants and homeless people have gotten just washed away in California. And somebody please explain that to me. Please explain to me how the homeless people have just been kicked out of California, but in New York, Chicago, migrants are getting like $5,000 a month. They're getting stipends and, and, and cards to buy food. Why isn't homeless people getting that? Why couldn't they, why couldn't they turn around instead of be, if there was a wall and there was less migrants, couldn't all this money that they spend on migrants be spent on the homeless people? Couldn't the homeless people be living such so much a better life if they were getting all the resources that were getting spent on the migrant people? We bring in problems, spend monies on the problems we brought in, and then ignore the problems that we've had here for years. It's ridiculous. Because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta at all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, creating black generational wealth. If they come here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources, then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians, they're coming for you too. And y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? I'll wait, y'all, because I wasn't done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what? feminists would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms. Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? 
<laughs> Whew. She cooking, she cooking. She cooking hot grease. This woman is fantastic. I personally, um, I did not want to mention that. I, I tried to, to, oh, Jesus. It's just blasphemy and, uh, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a super religious guy like that. Um, it's just blasphemy against that religion. Um, it, was, it was just, let's keep going. Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life. We cannot allow. All right, I'm gonna just say no to that. Mm, gotta be fair. Mm, found out it was a woman. Mm, okay, let's go. Dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House. Cause my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? Now let's plan on the <clears throat> natural fears that uh, most men, some women have uh, having a woman in uh, that position of power and to have to dominate in the highest position in the world against men around the world. It's the, one of the major, major stepping stones that a woman is going to have to step over to become the president. This is gonna be a hard step. See, we saw Hillary couldn't do it. And lastly, I could not get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden-Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend by the rising cry, uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to, dis uh, to sign off on disbursements as a last minute attempt to garner support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. And then, you know, they know that even if the agriculture, even if the, specifically the black agri agricultural industry starts to fail, then with the new influx of migrants, then they have the proper people or workers to take over those companies and to throw it to, to work at those companies at a very lower price to continue to keep that business going and to at that point force you know black any all agricultural owners and farmers and stuff like that out so they can take over the industry it's just a ploy um, to continue to take over industry Speaking of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm going to wrap this up, when they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine and took away their jobs, their livelihoods, and their freedoms if they refused. Trump gave us a choice and Biden gave us a mandate. Yeah, I, I wasn't with that either. I mean, I, you hate to be forced to do anything in this world. And like I said, you know, COVID destroyed me um, financially in, in many ways that I don't want to talk about. But, you know, it, it's still, you know, before that time, you know, it was a time of prosperity for me. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's hard to contemplate that people cannot see how the differences were between the Trump presidency and the Biden presidency and to think that the Harris presidency would be different than the Biden presidency is is, is asinine to think because it's pretty much going to be based on the same rhetoric and points but 
what we can hope is, is that no matter who wins, we'll have something change. Hey, y'all, because I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right and you need to protect your medical freedoms. Remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. <laughs> Clock it. <clears throat> so lastly, again, I'm gonna encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm gonna leave y'all with, hey mama, daddy, I made it. And my baby girl, Amaya, is somewhere in here so we can all say, hey, Amaya, in unison, cause she's the real superstar, y'all. But I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all get riled up and ready for Big T himself. Thank you guys for having me. I look forward to seeing you all. All right, so a star was born. Uh, it, it's killing me that she looks so much like my ex. That's the only bad thing about her. But she will definitely bring about um, some good conversations. She'll definitely spread the word, to hopefully to places that aren't listening because of the way that the most of the people who have spread the word that she's spread and look and the way that she looks is going to be more appealing to a lot of more people the way she talks is going to be appealing to a lot more people and it's just going to help uh hopefully spread the conservative word to the point where people start to do their research because that's what it's about you have to do your research you can't just rely on the rhetoric and the the um you know the backstabbing and the the you know the low hanging fruit of conversation that they use you have to stick with the points you have to stick with the relevancy to your life we, you have to stick to the relevancy of the money it's all important that we understand who we're voting for because this is a chess piece that is very important in most people's lives I did not understand that for a long long time I did not I didn't care I didn't live in a world where I thought who was in office mattered, but now I know it does because of my bacon. How the freak am I paying 70% more for my bacon, man? That's my whole thing. Inflation is killing me. How am I sell my cars if they gotta pay 20, 30% interest? It's 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 bad for business. You know, you have of course you possession yourself to try to get these things to be in your your, your best interest but some of these things are just detrimental to society all the way around and we have to figure that out and we have to point it out and we have to do our research to make sure we know what we're talking about and then we have to vote correctly and that's it all right my friends it is sunday we're gonna go out here and enjoy ourselves thank you for tuning in please like and subscribe to the show Please send me any questions you have, any thoughts you have, and I am out of here. Peace.